Welcome back to the channel. In this one, we're going to do what everyone else is doing right now. We're going to install Bazite on my GPD-14. In fact, I actually installed Bazite on this 1.4 about four weeks ago, and I've been working on the footage and the video ever since. And it just so happens that a couple of YouTubers have landed videos long before me, so I've ditched that. And what I'm going to do is we're going to upgrade this 1.4. That was a separate video, so I'm just going to mash the two bits of content together. I'm going to upgrade this to 4 terabytes plus a 1 terabyte or 1.5 terabyte micro SD. We're going to install Windows, brand new version of Windows on it, and a new version of Bazite or a fresh version of Bazite. And what we're going to do that makes this video a little bit different is we're going to do this. Let me just show you. We're going to have a C drive, which will have Windows on it. We're going to have a volume, which I'll have Bazite on it. We're going to have the remaining storage on the NVMe shared as a BTRFS a volume. That's not naturally supported by Windows, so I'm going to talk you through how to set that up. And then we're also going to use the micro SD card, and that's just going to be, you know, a format that's recognized by Windows and Bazite. Now, I know at least one other YouTuber has set up their dual boot and they've shared the micro SD card for the shared storage but I wanted to share as much storage as possible just because one if you um, have a separate volume that's for Bazite and a separate volume that's for Windows then you're kind of reducing the amount of storage that you have and you're having to duplicate stuff and really I wanted to have as much space as possible so as you can see I've, I've given myself a little bit of breathing space on the Bazite volume Quite a bit of breathing space on the Windows volume. I've still to install a few other um, apps on there like Epic and things. And in fact, I've not put any games on. I'm not going to store any games on the C drive volume. I'm going to keep that as tidy as possible. The D drive, that's going to have the majority of my games. And that's the BTRFS partition. Now, there's a reason I've uh, used a standard XFAT setup for the micro SD card. And that's because some games, like Forza Horizon 4, just don't work properly on a Bazite partition. They work fine. If you play, if you install a game on Bazite, it'll work from the BTRFS volume, but when you put it on, when you boot up into the Windows partition and run it, or something must change, it'll run fine on Windows, but then it won't work in Bazite anymore. And it seems to be that if you then copy that content and slap it on the micro SD card, it works across both those separate OSs. So, I'm downloading stuff in the background as we speak, and, um, well, what I did, and I'm going to overlay some footage now, Rip this apart. I'll do a tear down, a separate tear down video. I've got all the footage, so I'll do that later. Day. We ripped this apart. We uh, repasted the CPU. I didn't put any um, thermal pads on because they've obviously updated that. It comes with thermal pads now on on it already, so that was good. I was going to image from the original two terabyte drive across onto the four terabyte drive, but then I thought, no, I'm going to start fresh, and we'll set this up. So. Cutting over to our footage, I uh, finished the Windows install, I used a little uh, micro sized um, USB stick, 16 gig, put Windows on that and I also downloaded the firmware and driver update file from GPT's website and I'll put a link in the description to that. Ran that and then when Windows was finished, I fired up Minitool Partition Wizard and at that point the whole volume was Windows. Now this is a free tool, it's really good, definitely worth uh, downloading if you can. As you'll see I've got millions of partitions here now, but what I actually had was one giant partition, I then resized that, so if I take my C drive partition, I'll show you what I did there, if you right click on it, you can move and resize, and I basically dragged it down to about 200, and, well, almost 250 gig. Uh, then I okayed that, over here I clicked apply, it, did, it had to restart so that you could actually apply that resize, and then when it booted up in the Windows again, I had a, a large chunk of um, drive space that wasn't in use. From there, I went through this guide that I've linked in the description. Uh, Cyber Dopamine did this, this guide. I think they've cribbed a lot of stuff from another guide, but their guide was okay. So I went through that. I set up the bits I needed to do, which was um, creating the new volume. And the one vari variation I did from what they, they did in their video was they then took all the remaining storage and just set that up as a BTRFS partition, I didn't, so I did the, uh, all the settings, but when you got to the, the one where you create the BTRFS partition, I created it as a 100 gig partition, which you'll see 
somewhere here. So I created a 100 gig partition for that. In fact, you can see it when you look on my drive here. So, oh, it's 50 gig, sorry. I did have 100 of my previous setup, that's right. So I created a 50 gigabyte partition just for Bazite, and I left all the remaining partition space free. Then what I did was in Bazite, and we'll just restart this now and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so once you've gone through the basic process of one, finishing your Windows install, two, resizing your partition, three, going through the standard Bazite setup and setting up a dual boot, there is a couple of other steps I'm going to go through a bit later on in this video, and that's things you want to check in your BIOS, uh, which might trip you up, and things have tripped me up for a moment until I realised what was going on. And uh, the next thing you want to do, obviously, you should have a big chunk of storage space on your NVMe drive, which is now not unallocated. So uh, if you followed the same process as me. So what you need to do here is go into System, and then you need to go to KDE Partition Manager. Put in your password that you set for your uh, admin account. And what you'll find is you will have a number of partitions and then you'll have a giant partition which is unallocated. From there, I'll just unmount this just to show the process you go through. So from there, you need to right click on that. You need to um, create a new partition and that'll be a BTRFS partition, call it whatever you want. I just left it uh, with no name. In fact, I found leaving it with no name was, was better. And there you want to, once you've done that, you will need to then apply and it will format that partition as a BTRFS partition and it should pop up on the, the left here. So you'll see there's a, the ZRAM one, that's just that's a st kind of standard one that gets created for it. Uh, when you set a buzz out, the mass storage one, that's the micro SD card that's in this. And then you'll see the remaining storage. So what you need then to do is let it apply that setting, go back into it, and then it'll probably mount it. So then unmount it. Click on Edit Mount Point. So yeah, to get that partition name there, you need to click on the UUID, then click Select. It'll pop up on the side there, so I clicked on it there. And it'll ask you to put your password in again and confirm that, and then that will mount that drive. Then you'll also need to click on, make sure you've got the same tick boxes as here. Click on the More button, and you can put in some options. I did have a number of options in here, and they seem to have disappeared. I'll link a guide in the description to the Bazite site that lists a ton of things that you should put in here for Bazite. Sometimes they stay, sometimes they don't. Um, they've blanked it for me just now and everything seems to be okay, so I'm not going to worry about it too much just now. So once you've done that, you need to then mount the partition again. And then, importantly, you will need to load up Steam. And from here, you need to click on Settings. Go down to storage, and you will need to add a drive. And when you click add a drive, you'll get a number of drop, number of options, and you should pick your your um, NVMe drive that you haven't used, and then that'll add it there. And if you want to make that your main drive, as you can see here, this is not the main drive. So if I click on this one, click on the three dots at the side, and make it the default drive. Now. What you need to do next is you need to shut down Bazite. I'm going to boot up into Windows and we're going to do the BTRFS file system part in Windows. Okay, once it's powered down, you want to press your power button again to turn it on and be ready to press the delete key. Okay, now we're in the BIOS. So what you want to do is go along to boot. Make sure you've taken your USB out of the, the back so that it doesn't boot into the Bazite installer again. In here, you should see NVMe Fedora. You might see something else. So if you see anything else, go down to the UEFI NVMe drive priorities option. And in here, you've got your two boot options. So that's your two different partitions. So if it's set to Windows as partition one, then it's just always going to boot straight into Windows and you're not going to see the grub menu. So you change that to Fedora, then press escape and go along to save and exit. And now when it restarts, you should get a little grub menu with your current version of Fedora, your minus one version for rolling back if necessary. They should both be the same because it's a fresh install. And you will see Windows Boot Manager. So we're going to pick that just now. And from there, we're going to install the BTRFS driver. Okay, so now we're back in Windows. And as you saw earlier in this video, 
I can see volumes which are BTRFS volumes, for example, the BAS8 boot drive. So if I click in there, you can see the file system is BTRFS and I can see some settings in here. And the reason that is, is because I've installed a driver that was uh, created by a person called uh, Maharmstone, M-A-H-A-R-M-S-T-O-N-E, over on GitHub. So it's an open source BTRFS driver that's been written from scratch. So what you need to do is, I'll put a link in the description below, you need to download that and install it. So what you need to do is, once you've got it in your downloads, the zip file, you want to extract that, and then you'll get an extracted folder, and in here you have a number of files. You'll want to show, in view, you'll want to show the details, so you can see the, the full name of it. In fact, it'll be show uh, file name extensions. So you can find out which one's the INF file. So this file here, you can install from here. So if you're right clicking it and then go to install. And from here, it'll ask you if you want to open it. Yep, go for it. And I'll do a ton of configuration. And then I'll just recognize your drives. And you'll have a partition that works. Now, the reason I used BTRFS, I tried various other methods first. Initially, I used NTFS because I just presumed that would work on Baz8 and it kind of semi-worked, but also didn't work perfectly. Worked fine on Windows, but didn't work very well on Baz8. I then tried ext4 format, which worked fine in Baz8, but you have to buy a utility for um, Windows for it to work from a company called from Paragon Software. It was £30. It was an expensive test that didn't pan out. It would have been good if I could have got it to work, but I couldn't. So I also tried using XFAT. That doesn't work very good either. Although it works fine for USB drives, not so well with the NVMe. So I use BTRFS with this driver set. Now, there is a caveat that this might not be the most robust driver. It's been written by someone on the internet. It, you know, it's just, you know, you, you're using it at your own risk, basically. But this is a game in handheld. I don't use it for anything else other than generally gaming. If I lost that volume, it's not the end of the world. I still have the um, USB drive. If I was working on anything, I'd probably put it on there, to be honest. So from there, you also need to load up Steam on your device. You need to go into your settings again and down to storage and you'll need to add it in there as well. So you need to add a drive. I've already added it in there, you see. And then make that your default drive if that's what you want to do as well. And then that's it. It's that simple. You've now got a machine that will dual boot in Windows 11 and dual boot into Bazite. You've shared a ton of storage. So the way other YouTubers are doing it is they would use the USB storage as shared device storage. So you install a game on there, you better access it from Bazite and Windows, and then the remaining partition space they would presumably use it as an NTFS partition, and then it's restricted to just Windows. Now I wanted to have that option where I could use it in Bazite as well. Probably a bit more robust just using it for Windows, but if you did install a game on the NTFS partition and you then wanted to play on Bazite, you'd have to install the game a second time onto your USB drive or copy the game across onto the USB drive, presuming you had enough space. So this is just the way I've done things. As you can see, I've given myself quite a chunk of space. I've got what, nearly five terabytes of uh, space there for storage. Quite an upgrade for this little Win 4. And I'm gonna just fill it full of games now. I'll do another follow-up video on the teardown, the full teardown. I've shown a little bit of that in this video. The full teardown, if people are interested in that, it's actually quite an easy teardown, I have to say. A lot easier than I was expecting. You don't need a lot of tools, you do need a, a screwdriver, and in my case I used my uh, my newly purchased iFixit kit, which was fantastic, had the perfect size bit for it. I used a, a, a guitar pick for just popping the case open, and I had a little spudger for taking off the strip in the bottom, and the only other tool I said would think you would need is a hair dryer, just to warm up that bottom strip so you can peel it off without damaging the glue too much. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'm off to play some games.